So, good morning and welcome back to the course on classics in total synthesis part 1. So, in the last lecture we talked about uh, synthetic utility of radical cyclization in total synthesis of uh, triquinines and where we talked about uh, synthesis of two linear triquinines namely uh, hirsutine and capnaline. These two were reported by Dennis Curran and today we will continue our discussion on the applications of radical cyclization to two more triquinines. One is an angular triquinine, other one is a propylene type. Okay. So, the first one the angular triquinine which we will talk about today is called sylphie perfoline. So, this we already discussed by a different method. The here what Kuran has done is if you look at the linear synthesis where he has made a cyclopentene first then he tried to have a side chain, he tried to have a side chain with a radical and that will undergo 2 phi exo radical cyclization. So, for this angular triquinine again he wants to have only one 5 member ring that is cyclopentene only the position of the two side chain differs. So, if you look at the left hand side it remains same. Okay. However, this side chain comes to here. Okay. So, now if you look at this carefully the phi xo radical cyclization onto this double bond followed by another phi xo radical cyclization will give you the angular triquinine. So, this was the key strategy which he wanted to use in the synthesis of sylphie perfoline. Okay, let us see his retrosynthesis and his idea is to have this vinyl bromide, this vinyl bromide should in principle undergo two successive phi xo trig radical cyclization. Whereas, in the case of capnaline and hirsutine which are linear angular triquinines, he has used a phi xo trig followed by phi xo dig cyclization here it is two consecutive phi xo trig cyclization. So, this can be obtained from this particular cyclopentenone. So, if you look at this carefully first you can do two alkylation okay, one with methyl the other one with this allyl halide substituted allyl halide then followed by the Grignard addition of 4 carbon unit onto this ketone and hydrolysis will give this precursor. Okay. So, the synthesis actually started with 3 ethoxy cyclopentenone which is uh, very easy to make from cyclopentane 1, 3 dione by treatment with ethanol and HCl. One can prepare this in large quantity. Now, you do the alkylation first with methyl iodide. So, you can introduce the methyl group at alpha carbon. Then again another alkylation with this substituted allyl bromide. So, you could introduce two for two alkyl groups alpha to the carbonyl. Okay. Now, what you need is you need to add a Grignard reagent. So, the Grignard reagent is uh, made from bromobutene. So, the butenyl magnesium bromide was added to this ketone in a 1 2 fashion to get this uh, allylic tertiary alcohol. Now, this upon protonation, okay, once you protonate, you get this positive charge. Now, the lone pair on this ethoxy group will come and then pushes this water molecule out. So, you get the corresponding cyclopentene. So, this is the key precursor for the radical cyclization. So, you took this compound and one problem with this is this is the Michael acceptor. Okay. If you do a radical cyclization, first phi exo trig radical cyclization will work. However, the second exo radical cyclization may not work. So, that is why it is better to protect the carbonyl group. So, the carbonyl group was protected as uh, ethylene ketal by treating with ethylene glycol and uh, acid. So, then he carried out the key tandem radical cyclization. So, the tandem radical cyclization worked well to give a mixture of two diastereomers. So, this is the required isomer 
but he also got the unwanted isomer in the ratio 3 is to 1 in favor of the required isomer. Okay. So, now what is required is you have to remove the ketal as well as remove the ketone. So, the ketal was removed using treatment with acid and the keto group was removed using wolf kishner reduction. So, that is how you could complete the total synthesis of sylphy perfolin that the epimer also was uh, you know made where the ketal was removed and wolf kishner reduction gave the corresponding epi sylphy perfolin. So, in summary if you look at this synthesis Dennis Curran who reported this synthesis in 1987 started with the cyclopentane 1,3 3 dione and used like in the case of hirsutine as well as in capnelin he used the tandem 5 exotric radical cyclization to accomplish the total synthesis of sylphy perfolin. Overall it took about uh, 7 linear steps uh, with a yield of 6.4 percent. So, now from linear to angular to we will go to propylene triquinates. How propylene triquinates can be synthesized using radical cyclization? So, these are some of the propylene triquinates and the, the basic one is called modifane and there are some oxygenated modifanes, uh, 13 acetoxy modifane, modifane epoxide and polycarol. So, this modifane, first let us look at the modifane. Uh, so, you can call this as 3-3 uh, propylene system, okay. 3 carbon, 3 carbon, 3 carbon, all 3 carbon atoms are joined together. Okay. So, that is why this is called 3-3-3 propylene system and it was isolated from a golden rod plant and which was well known for its toxicity to cattle and sheep. And from the synthetic point of view, particularly from Dennis Curran's uh, radical cyclization strategy point of view, he wanted to extend the same uh, you know tandem radical cyclization. However, in this synthesis he faced quite a bit of problems. One, there are three contiguous quaternary center in modifane, 1, 2 and 3. There are 3 contiguous quaternary centers. So, it is not that easy to form 3 contiguous quaternary centers using tandem radical cyclization. This is a big challenge. Then you also have equal number of chiral centers, 1, 2, 3, 3 chiral centers are there okay? and particularly the chiral center with a methyl group that is not that easy to fix. And the molecular arch architecture of modifine is such a way that it does not allow the tandem radical cyclization to take place. So, he has to do stepwise radical cyclization to achieve the total synthesis of modifine. So, let us see how he achieved the total synthesis of modifine. So, he thought about four different strategies. Okay. So, let us not uh, uh, go into the details of how these four different strategies he wanted to use. He wanted to make first without this methyl group. So, to check his strategy. So, that is synthesis of desmethyl modifine. So, he started with the cyclohexane 1, 3 dione and then if you treat with NBS, you can introduce the bromine at this carbon. Then you treat with methanol PTSA, so that will form the corresponding enol ether. So, once you have this enol ether, then again you add this 4 butanol magnesium bromide, what we have done for the synthesis of sylphy perfolin, followed by hydrolysis, you get the 3 homo allyl 2 bromo cyclopentino. 3 homo allyl 2 bromo cyclopentino. So, now you reduce the enone with sodium borohydride cerium chloride under Lucier reduction condition to get the corresponding allylic alcohol. So, once you have this allylic alcohol, then treat with isobutric anhydride. Okay. So, when you treat with isobutric anhydride, it forms the corresponding ester. The idea is once you have this ester, he wanted to carry out 
a Claisen rearrangement, intramolecular Claisen rearrangement. So, for that he has to treat with LDA and TMS chloride which in situ generate this enol TMS followed by Claisen rearrangement, island ester Claisen rearrangement to give this carboxylic acid. Okay. So, now if you see you have that dimethyl group which is a quaternary carbon and there is another quaternary carbon. So, two quaternary carbons are made. Now, what you need to do is to introduce the third quaternary carbon followed by cyclization. So, the carboxylic acid was esterified with diazomethane to get the corresponding ester. Then he tried to cyclize this okay, using radical cyclization. You, you treat with thibutyl tenhydride and AABN. So, here when you want to do radical cyclization, you can use stoichiometric amount of tributyl tinhydride and catalytic amount of AABN or one can also use catalytic amount of tributyl tinhydride, catalytic amount of AABN but stoichiometric amount of sodium cyanoboride. So, what does it mean? That is the tributyl tin halide which is formed can be further reduced with sodium cyanoborohydride or sodium borohydride. So, that is how one can use tributyl tin in catalytic amount. Okay. So, now this reaction works well as you can see here 3 is to 1 ratio of the cyclized product and then simple reduced product. And here the stereochemistry what he got was 5 is to 1 in ratio uh, there where the required isomer alpha is the major isomer. Okay. So, successfully you could carry out the first radical cyclization. Okay. Successfully you could carry out the first radical cyclization. Now, what he has to do is he has to connect here these two carbon, connect these two carbon to form the third ring. Okay. So, for that what he did he reduced the ester to alcohol. So, once you have the alcohol you oxidize to aldehyde and then treatment with uh, triphenylphosphine and CBr4 will give you corresponding dibromoalkene. Okay. So, he wanted to use this dibromoalkene as the radical precursor. Okay. So, you can see you have two bromines okay. and if it cyclizes here, so that will give you the corresponding mod modifier. So, when he did this reaction with 1.1 equivalent of tributyl tinhydride and AABM. So, between these two bromides, we should know which one will form radical first. Obviously, so this is more exposed or least hindered, is not it? So, that will form the radical quickly. So, that radical was formed and if this radical is formed, then this cannot cyclase. So, what it will happen? It will take up the hydrogen and it will simply reduce. And this also does not isomerize. Okay. This does not isomerize. So, he thought this will isomerize to the trans compound and the trans compound can undergo the 5 xo trig radical cyclization. But the isomerization did not take place with 1.1 1, 1 equivalent of tributyl tinhydride and AABN only the less hindered bromine was replaced. Okay. That only was reductively removed. Okay. The, the exchange did not take place. So, what he thought? So, instead of using 1.1 1 .1 equivalent of tributyl tinhydride, he thought he will use catalytic amount of tributyl tinhydride and excess sodium cyanoborohydride. Okay. And here the idea is first anyhow only this bromide is reduced. Okay. So, let it reduce. Afterwards, if you add excess sodium cyanoborohydride which will in turn generate more tributyl tinhydride, then this bromine will be replaced by radical and that can undergo cyclization. So, with this he tried this reaction and as expected first the least hindered bromide was reductively removed then followed by a further heating under the same condition 
the trans radical was formed and which underwent further cyclization to give desmethyl modifiant. So, if you look at the modifiant structure, you need one extra methyl group here. Okay. So, based on this, he wanted to extend the same strategy to the synthesis of modifiant. So, for that, he started with this trimethyl tin derivative. Okay. This trimethyl tin derivative, what he did, if you treat with LDA, if you treat with LDA, you can generate anion here. Okay. That anion will come like this and then it will attack this carbon that is the primary halide. So, alkylation will take place at the primary halide and the secondary halide will not be affected. So, that will give you this. His idea was now if you can generate radical here, okay, that radical can undergo cyclization phi xo and when it comes back the trimethyl tin radical will come out that way you have the double bond still intact. So, with this he treated with tributyl tin hydride in the presence of AABN. So, he got exclusively this product. How did he get? The tributyl tin hydride first generates the tributyl tin radical okay, and it exchanges with bromine. So, you get the secondary radical. Okay. So, when I talked about radical cyclization, the stereochemical outcome of radical cyclization particularly for phi xo radical cyclization can be done by drawing a chair like conformation. So, exactly if you see this, we have drawn a chair like conformation. So, the first step is the addition of the radical to the double bond phi xo trig. So, that should give you this compound. Okay. I will leave it for few seconds so that now you can understand this. So, this will undergo phi xo radical cyclization to give this radical. Now, this radical will come like this and then eliminate the tributyl tin radical. So, you can write like this. So, that is how the cyclization takes place and the methyl group which is alpha it is because here the methyl group was put in equatorial position. So, that is how you know the chair like conformation will help in establishing the stereochemistry of the methyl group which is formed here. Okay. So, once you have this bicyclic system the next step is you have to convert this ester, convert this ester into a dimethyl group and then CH2. So, for that first you hydrolyze the ester to carboxylic acid and then treat with the acid chloride you get the corresponding acid chloride. So, now what he did was he tried a Sakurai like reaction where the allyl TMS, okay, the allyl TMS was treated with this acid chloride in the presence of titanium tetrachloride to add this bromo allyl group directly to the carbonyl group. So, now if you look at this, so you have the vinyl bromide which on treatment with tributyl tin hydride should generate the radical and that radical should add here to form the third 5 membered ring otherwise that will give the core structure of modifying. So, when you did this reaction, yes the reaction worked well and then you could get the propylene structure. So, now what is required is convert this carbonyl group. The carbonyl group should be converted into dimethyl group. Okay. So, if you look at the radical cyclization, first the radical cyclization took place followed by the migration of the double bond, internal double bond instead of external, external double bond, you get internal double bond. That is because you have a ketone after radical cyclization because normally radical cyclization you do it at high temperature. So, the double bond exocyclic double bond migrated to alpha beta unsaturated ketone. So, what he did to introduce the two methyl groups, first he treated with methyl lithium to get the corresponding tertiary alcohol. These tertiary alcohols are known if you treat with uh, you know titanium tetrachloride and dimethyl zinc, 
ok it is known well known in the literature the tertiary alcohol can be converted into quaternary by treatment with titanium tetrachloride and dimethyl zinc. So, basically you know the Lewis acid Lewis acid will coordinate with OH to make it as a good leaving group and dimethyl zinc will deliver the methyl group. One can also do the same thing by treating with dimethyl zinc titanium chloride in the presence of TMS bromide ok. So, effectively what you are doing is you are converting the tertiary alcohol into quaternary. So, this is what was the expected product but what he got was another product that can be easily explained when this OH goes as a leaving group the methyl group can attack this carbon or the double bond can migrate the double bond can migrate the tertiary carbocation followed by methyl group attacking here. So, he got a mixture of two methyl groups ok, two gem dimethyl group here as well as here. So, he thought ok this is not a good method. So, he wanted to introduce the gem dimethyl group first. So, for that what he did you take ester and then convert into the tertiary alcohol. So, now you see two gem dimethyl groups are introduced first itself at the right place. Now, you have to homologate. So, what he did? He treated with TMS bromide to get the corresponding bromide. Now, he wanted that vinyl group. So, he treated with titanium tetrachloride and then bromo allyl trimethyl cyril. When he did this reaction, he got again a mixture of two compounds and that again was obtained by rearrangement. So, now when you use titanium tetrachloride this will go as a leaving group when it goes as a leaving group ok instead of this allyl TMS attacking this carbon either this bond of the 5 membered ring or this bond can migrate. When the right hand side bond migrates you get this product when the left hand side migrates you get this product what happens once this migrates then this allyl TMS this will attack the double bond and the double bond will come here to neutralize the positive charge. So, ring expansion takes place ok. So, instead of 3 5 membered ring fused you get 1 5 membered ring and 1 6 membered ring fused and you get a vinyl bromide also. Okay. So, again he could not get what the precursor he was looking for to synthesize the modified. Okay. So, what he, he went back to the ester, hydrolyzed the ester and converted that into acid chloride. So, now what he did he introduced a triple bond, he added a triple bond to the acid chloride. So, for that he followed uh, uh, Negishi's procedure. So, paradigm catalyzed coupling reaction to introduce a triple bond. So, his idea is later he wanted to convert this carbonyl into gem dimethyl group. Let us see how he has done. Then TMS group was removed which is not required with a fluoride source potassium fluoride DMF. You can remove the TMS to get the alkynyl ketone ok. So, once you have this alkynyl ketone now you have to introduce the radical precursor that is corresponding bromide or iodide, vinyl bromide or vinyl iodide. So, the treatment with TMS iodide. So, the TMS iodide it is again developed by uh, you know Kishi. So, it undergoes a 1 4 addition to give trans iodo compound ok, the trans vinyl iodide ok. The trans vinyl iodide is required as, as you know for the radical cyclization to take place you need the trans iodo compound. So, once you have this trans iodo compound then tributyltin hydride reaction works very well to get the modifying that is the propylene skeleton. So, once you have this propylene skeleton now what is required is converting this ketone into dimethyl group ok. Earlier he failed in converting this ketone uh, into dimethyl group and when he started with dimethyl group then cyclization did not go 
ok. So, how we did was when you have the ketone with the double bond that is cyclopentenone you add methyl grignard or methyl lithium to get the corresponding tertiary alcohol. Once you have this tertiary alcohol the next step is the oxidative transposition, oxidative transposition of allylic tertiary alcohol. So, this was reported by William Dobbin using PCC. So, PCC that is pyridinium chlorochromate is well known for the oxidative transposition of allylic tertiary alcohol to corresponding enone. So, here he used Jones reagent, Jones reagent is nothing but chromium trioxide and sulfuric acid in acetone. So, that oxidation gave the transpositioned enone, once you have this enone then for the introduction of one more methyl group you normally use uh, a Gilman's reagent. So, that way you could introduce now the gem dimethyl group ok. What is required is convert this into a methyl group. So, treatment with uh, Wittig salt then you can get the corresponding exocyclic double bond, but for modifying what you need is the endo double bond. So, the exocyclic double bond on heating with paratoluene sulfonic acid gave the modifying. So, he has successfully used uh, not the tandem radical cyclization, but two radical cyclization to form two 5 membered rings. He also started with one 5 membered ring and two more 5 membered rings were added based on the radical cyclization. His synthesis started with cyclopentane 1, 3 dione and he also used an intermediate cyclic vinyl stannine for the successful synthesis of modifin and overall this synthesis took little longer than the other two. So, it took about 14, 14 steps, but the yield is uh, quite good. So, 14 step with 18 percent overall yield and with complete control of stereochemistry is one of the key aspects of the total synthesis of uh, modifin reported by Correct. Though uh, it is a racemic synthesis, uh, it was uh, one of the classical synthesis of trichrome. Okay. With this I will stop and we will see more discussion on synthesis of trichronines in the next class. Thank you.